This video is an introduction to the Spectracom SecureSync and NetClock web-based interface. We've recently made a major technology upgrade in the platform. Uh, we still support monitoring, monitoring protocols like SNMP and Syslog, but this new web-based technology also lets us support the latest AJAX and REST technologies uh, to be used as well. For human users, we've redesigned the interface to make it really easy to use. Once the unit's set up and deployed, you'll be using this interface to verify the status and diagnose any issues that you see. And so you'll see that we've laid it out to be really easy to use. The, the first thing you'll do is, is log in with a, a username. And I'll just describe uh, what's shown here. Uh, first, you'll see the, the current time of the unit. And because I've set up a local clock, it's also showing the time in my local time zone here up in the upper left hand corner. Uh, it gives me my username, the ability to log out. If I have uh, languages installed, I have the ability to choose another interface language. And at first we'll be supporting the uh, classic interface as well. So if you're used to the existing interface of the SecureSync, you can click this button and use that one instead. I'll skip the main menu for the moment here and just explain the status. When you come to the main screen, you see the status of the system. Uh, my reference that I'm using right now to synchronize is a GPS receiver, GPS zero, and the approximate uh, timing error that I'm seeing from that receiver is between uh, 10 and 100 nanoseconds. You can see my power status is normal. Green is good for the AC power, and the status of the unit is in sync. It's not in a holdover or a fault condition. So right away you can see from the interface, the green is good and there's no uh, problems with the system. Right below that you see the most recent events. So we started um, we started this uh, unit just a few minutes ago and you can see that uh, we disconnected the GPS antenna two minutes ago and that it's now been reconnected. And so this tells you exactly what's happened uh, in your system recently. If I need more details I can go uh, to the uh, details page and in fact if I want to search for a particular problem like let's say I want to know when the unit was rebooted I can type that in and I can see the date and time uh, it, that the unit has been uh, rebooted. You'll also see in the main page here the status of your references. So these are the things that I can synchronize to. Uh, the first one that I have set up is my GPS so if the GPS is there I'm going to use that. I've also set up NTP as a reference. So my unit is an NTP server, I can give time to people, but I can also use NTP as a backup reference should I lose the GPS information for any reason. I, I use the, I'll, I'll, my unit will switch over to the NTP interface. When you can see on the statuses, there's both are green, so both are valid interfaces. Uh, there's two things that you need to be a reference. One is a sense of the date and time, and then also a precise time mark, and that, that's what these time and PPS lights mean, so either one of those is valid. Then below I can see the uh, performance of my system, the disciplining state of the internal oscillator, it's in a lock condition, and it has uh, about a 21 nanosecond phase error and a very small uh, frequency error as well. If I want uh, more details than that, I can click on uh, the icon here and, and look at the history of the box as well. So let's imagine I want to make sure that things in the past were okay, and I can see exactly the phase error magnitude, the frequency error, and, and some uh, oscillator uh, information here on the screen. This all looks very low. Uh, and that's because when I powered it up, I started with a with a large phase error, and then as the unit acquired its its timing information, that reduced a lot. So if I if I zoom in a little bit on the current time, you can see that for the past few days, the uh, the phase error has been has hovered right between 50, 50 nanoseconds uh, to the to, uh, to the positive or negative uh, direction, and I can also uh, zoom in to where I powered up and 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 see exactly what happened there when I started the unit uh, and, it, and its uh, phase error then decreased. So you get some information there. On the main menus, uh, this gives you the ability to navigate directly to any information that you might want. 
in particular on the interfaces, you can see uh, each of the possible inputs and outputs of the unit. And if I want to see um, all of them, I just click on one of the headings. So I'll look at um, all of my inputs and outputs organized by option card. In, in this view, you see the rear panel of the unit. And down below, you'll see organized by slot number each of the inputs or outputs with its status. So I've got a GPS set up. It's seeing seven satellites, and you can even see the signal strength of those uh, satellites there next to it. Likewise, my PPS outputs are enabled. You can see I've got a frequency input here. It's invalid. It's set up for 10 megahertz, but there's no 10 megahertz input. You can see that my mouse is hovering over this entry in the list, and if you look at the picture of the unit above, you can see circled in orange the connector that this is that corresponds to this input. So I can tell right now that there's no 10 megahertz input on that particular connector on the back of the unit. Likewise, if I, I can go the other way, if I'm interested in, uh, for example, uh, this connector, I can click on that connector and I'm immediately taken to its status and settings. Uh, down below. So again, this is set up for an automatic format detection, but it's not seeing a valid format there because there's nothing connected. So I very quickly get detailed information about all of my connections on the, uh, on the rear panel. Uh, there's also several other screens that you'll be able to look through. I'll look briefly at the uh, NTP page. Uh, the, as I mentioned, the unit is set up to not only uh, be an NTP server, but also it's looking at other NTP servers and monitoring its time so that it can switch as required. On this page, you can see a variety of uh, security setup selections. You can turn your NTP server on and off, and you can see that it's currently selecting the system time as a reference. It's acting as a stratum one server some other statistics as well as, as, well as the uh, a graph of the recent time offset and frequency offsets uh, from the NTP server. And on the right, you get the status of all the NTP servers that are in place. The system time means that I'm able to sync to my system. So my GPS uh, reference is what I'm synchronized to currently. I've also set up uh, a generic uh, online server from ntp.org and you can see from this status that it's in touch with that server, but it has a delay of approximately 20 uh, milliseconds, and so it's not using that, it's in a solution. So it's, this is a, a server that's close by. It has about a 0.3 millisecond offset, and so the NTP has chosen to use that one in my internal reference, and it's excluding the one that's further away. If these were not available, then it would switch to this, uh, this pool.ntp.org server. So you can see from this uh, introduction that the, the unit gives you very comprehensive information and also about faults. If, you, uh, if something happens to one of your references, like let's say your GPS antenna becomes uh, disconnected, you'll see that status uh, immediately on the uh, main page of the unit. So you can see immediately what's happened here. I'm in... Uh, my unit is still in sync, but there's a fault, and I've got uh, a minor alarm because I have a GPS antenna problem because I've taken it off. And you can see that the, the, uh, the time from the GPS is now considered invalid. However, the NTP is still valid, so it, I, I've switched my reference to NTP1. And so I'm now synchronized to NTP, and I'm providing time to my clients uh, based on my NTP server status. To conclude the demonstration, I'll just show you the uh, remaining menus. Under Management, you'll see uh, the selections that you'll need to configure the system, from security settings on the interfaces to uh, how users log into the system or changing your password, uh, to sending email messages, for instance, if the status of the system changes. And under Tools, you have the tools you need to upgrade the system, for instance, or back up and save the configuration of the unit to reboot or halt it, and even some detailed system logs if you care to look at them. And then uh, also the help menu as well, where you can find service contact information. So that concludes our demonstration of the web-based user interface. This interface is available using any web browser. You don't need any special software installed. 
Uh, in fact, even with uh, mobile phone interfaces uh, where you might have less screen space, the interface will automatically resize itself so that it's uh, very easy to read and use even on a, on a narrow screen. We hope you enjoyed this introduction. Find out more at Viacom's website.